mic a little bit here. You know, almost 25 years as a, a disciple, and I, I still haven't gotten that that symbol clapped down. So it's the year of miracles, and maybe God will work in my life. Amen. Well, I'm excited to get a chance to preach to you guys today. And uh, I, I love this building. You know, I had a chance to preach here years and years ago, and I did a lesson called family in heaven and on earth, and uh, it was one of my favorite times of ever getting to speak God's word to a group of people, and I'm hoping that this is going to be even better than that today, amen? But that's going to have a lot to do with the lesson, but it's going to have a lot to do with you guys. So I really need you now. Let's get fired up to get into God's word, and let's turn over to Leviticus. an acquired taste in the Bible, Leviticus. You got a, a real hard liner when their favorite book is Leviticus. We're going to go into Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 8. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar, he throughout the night till morning. And the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall, put, shall then put on his linen clothes and his linen undergarments until, and next to his body and shall remove the ashes from the burnt offering that the fire is consumed on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he is to take off his clothes and put on other clothes and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It is not to go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange burnt offering on the fire and the burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. You know, this is a, an incredible passage. And you know, just reading it, it it's just got a, a rich meaning to it. And here it says, when, when you have this altar, it, it's got to keep burning all through the night. It doesn't matter what, what month, what day, what week it be. It, the fire must never go out on God's altar. You know, now as disciples, as Christians, thankfully we don't put animals on the altar anymore. <laughs> Instead, we, we put something different on the altar. You know what we put on the altar now? We put ourselves on the altar. It talks about it in Romans 12, verse 1. It says, therefore, we urge you, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. This is your, your true and proper worship. So the depiction would be is that when we become a disciple, we then throw ourselves on the fiery altar of God. And it says that the fire can not go out. Much like the, the parable of the ten virgins. It says half were foolish and half were wise. Some brought oil, uh, oil to keep the fire burning and half did not. And those who kept on fire for God were able to be in the great wedding one day in heaven. You know, we've got to stay fired up. You know, I, I think perhaps maybe the greatest way to find out how to stay fired up is to study out some men who are actually set on fire for God. And, you know, this is the, the year of miracles. And so we're going to study out one of my favorite miracles in the Bible. We're going to study out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in their fiery furnace. The title of my lesson for you today is On Fire for God. Let's turn over to Daniel chapter 3. This uh, lesson is on the program at the Winter Workshop, but you're never going to hear it unless you come. 
but somebody else is preaching it, but I just couldn't help myself. I had to get a chance to preach this lesson. We're going to pick it up here, Daniel 3 and verse 1. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the provincial officials assembled before the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, This is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Wow. What a depiction. Yeah, I have three points for you guys today. And I believe that if we take these points into our hearts, we're going to walk out these doors more on fire for God than we've ever been before. You know, I got to ask you to take your pick. Worship the statue or be thrown into the fire. This is the options of this world. And here he sets up this golden statue. And he says, if you're not willing to worship it, if you're not willing to bow down to it, you are going into the fiery furnace. Now, a little bit to understand about the book of Daniel. In chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar gets an, a vision, a dream, I'm sorry, of this incredible, dazzling statue that we all love to study out in the kingdom study. Was God showing him what would take place in the future and exactly when God's spiritual kingdom would be established? No, but instead of really honoring God, and because of the dream, he then builds a statue in his own honor. And because he doesn't honor God, God allows him to lose his mind in the next chapter, in chapter 4, but we're not going to get into that today. You know, but here this scene it, it, it is not as far-fetched as you may think. Throughout history, this has happened. Many dictators have built statues in their honor. People like Joseph Stalin or Saddam Hussein. We've even seen dictators revere themselves as a god king. Even to this day in North Korea with Kim Jong-un, there is a huge statue far higher than 90 feet that people are bowing down to and worshiping every day. So we may go, well, I can't quite relate to this, but I'm telling you, this has a meaning for our life right here, even in the city of angels. You know, it says in Romans 15, verse 4, that everything that was written in the past was written for us. So the intended audience of this book here, Daniel, was for you this morning. It's a physical foreshadowing of what we spiritually have happened to us today. You know, we live in a time, maybe not here in America, of physical dictatorship, but bet your bottom dollar we have a spiritual one. What would this mean for us? Turn with me over to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, we're going to pick it up in verse 8. In verse 8, it says again, The devil took him, Jesus, to a very high mountain 
And he showed them all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. For his reign, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the church said, Amen. You know, here we see the spiritual battle that is happening right here in this room. It's happening even in our hearts and our minds as I'm preaching this lesson. You know, Satan takes Jesus up on this mountain. He shows him all the kingdoms of all history and all the treasures of this world. And he says, you know what? It can all be yours if you would just bow down and worship me. You know, this is the splendor of our world. It's, it's an enormous, dazzling, incredible statue that is crying out to us every day. Just worship me and bow down. And it can all be yours. We have the golden statue of drugs and alcohol. The golden statue of pornography and impurity. The golden statue of class and status. The golden statue of greed and possessions. Or just the golden statue of being a religious person. You know, if you look back in the Daniel passage, it says the herald got up and made this declaration that they had to bow down, and the people did just that. You know that herald, what it means is a messenger? It's literally the same meaning as an apostle. See, God has his apostles, Jesus has his apostles, but bet your bottom dollar, so does Satan. He's got his heralds, and they're, they're going out, and they're, they're ringing out the message to bow down to the things of this world. In every movie, every pop song, the commercials, the billboards, what we see going on in our schools, many even in our families, in our workplaces, are everybody t hearing the same message, the same, and bowing down to the statue. You know, what does this slavery look like? Normal. It just looks normal. It's just what everybody does. It said back in Daniel 3 that all the people, all the languages, every man was bowing down to the statue. You know, it's an incredible thing that we have churches all over the world. And it's an incredible privilege to be able to visit many of them. And uh, Sarah and I are super grateful to be able to go to missions conferences all over the world. And if you've never been to a missions conference, you've got to go to a missions conference. Because there's something that's so amazing about going to somewhere very different where you live and see that there are disciples that are walking, talking, and preaching the same way that you are right here in the United States. But no matter where you go on this planet what language they may speak, what color their skin may be, whether their floor is made of dirt or granite, they're all worshiping the statue. It does not matter. Every tribe, language, and nation is worshiping the statue. You know what's another amazing thing, though, is that no matter where you go on this planet, you go to the Philippines or Philadelphia, this still works the same anywhere in the world. Any place, and with this, you could call someone to come out of that oppression, come out of that slavery. They could find liberation in God's kingdom, even today in our times. But everyone has a decision. This morning, you're either going to bow down to the statue, or you're going to be thrown into the furnace. You know, it's our pick. It's whatever we would want to do. But let's see what happens when you get thrown into the fire. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up in verse 8. My second point for you today is tested with fire. It says at this time... Some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harps, the pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. 
and that whatever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. There are some of the Jews whom you have set over the fairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you did not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harps, the pipes, and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image of gold, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not... We want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed, you think? He ordered that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual, and he commanded the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men... Wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And three, three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Well, I wish I could tell you that the story went that the king changed his mind. But no, 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 he threw him into the fire. See, when you decide to make a stand in this world, this is what we're here doing today, my brothers and sisters. We're not here playing church. We're here combating the forces of darkness in this world. We've said, no, 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 not us, not this generation, not my family, not my people. We will take a stand, and I don't care if you even throw us into the furnace. We're willing to go. See, Christianity, Christianity is not about self-help. No, no, that's American religion. Christianity is about one thing and one thing only, truth. This universe was created he is God, the creator of all things, and Jesus Christ was his son. He died on a cross for your sins, and that is the truth. No matter what you think or what they say, it, whether it gets you good things or bad things, it lands you in the furnace or lands you in a mansion, that's what we've come here to stand for today. And I love these men, the guts and the courage. They go, you know what? God could save us. He will save us ultimately because heaven awaits but even if he does not, even if Christianity gets me pain, we're still not going to bow down. Now that's a true disciple of Jesus right there. And I think that that is the group that I'm looking at this morning. A group of men and women who said, you know what, we understand that Christianity is always going to be against the social norms of our time. It's always going to go against the times of our time. And we are going to stand up and say, not us, not today. But we're going to be tested with fire. You know, fire is a very scary thing. I mean, a, there's not much more painful than being burned. And I, I got to think it's probably the worst way to die, is to be burned alive. You know, I watched this movie several years ago called Only the Brave. And it's about firefighters. And there's two types of, you know, firefighting. There's, like, structure fire, and then there's wildfires. A structure fire, you fight with water. But a wildfire, you actually fight it, for the most part, with fire. And these guys would start fires and would kind of control the fire and this and that. And I have found that to be the, the way to fight the fires of this world is you have to fight it with fire. You have to fight it by being already on fire for God. 
You know, the reality is that we're probably not going to get lit on fire physically. But it doesn't mean that you can't get burnt. Because you're either going to get fired up or burned up in this life. Jesus said in this life you will have trouble. It didn't say in this life you have trouble in the church. It said in this life you're going to have trouble. The great thing is that when you're on fire for God, you can go from strength to strength. You can get better, not bitter, and you can fight fire with fire. You know, there are a couple things that I think are going to test us with fire. We're going to have the fire of refinement. It talks about in 1 Peter 1, it says, These have come, trials, that your faith may be proven genuine, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. See, when you get up here and you say, Jesus is my Lord, it's kind of a prediction. It's kind of like, hey, we're predicting this. There are going to come moments when you actually have to live it out. When that faith has to meet action. When it, when it comes time to deny yourself. When it comes time to sacrifice. When it comes time to maybe go somewhere or give up a relationship and see people go somewhere. And all these things are going to be moments where you're going to live out Jesus is Lord. And there are going to be fires that refine your faith. Yeah. You know, we're going to have the fire of solidarity. It talks about in 1 Corinthians 3, it says, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each man's work. You know, we, we could build a church however we want. You could build a lukewarm church. I mean, you could build a church that believes anything. I mean, there's churches out there where people believe in a little lady in South Korea is actually God. You could build a church using wood, hair, straw. But when it's going to be tested with fire, you better use some costly stones. And God's going to test the solidarity of this church. Is this church going to be a church of sold out disciples who are truly willing to go anywhere, do anything, give up everything? They're going to forcefully advance, are going to bust out those doors one day, are going to see us get to a thousand for the Lord in the city of angels? Is that going to be this church? I put it before you, that is the city of angels church. It's going to be a solid, strong church. You know, these guys were thrown into the fire. And when you when you get out of the waters of baptism, that's where you go. You go straight from the water into the fire. And God's going to refine you through those fires. Just the way he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, what an incredible moment. These guys just stood their ground. And that's what we're going to do as well. But, you know, it talks about it in Isaiah 43. It says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. You know, let's see if God makes good on his promise. Let's keep reading here in Daniel 3, verse 24. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement. He asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there is no smell of fire on them. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel to rescue his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon, the church said. Yeah. My final point for you today, it's safe in the fire with God. You know, this is incredible. They're in the fire. And then Nebuchadnezzar looks in there and goes, wait, hold on. How many did we throw in there? He goes, but, but there's, there's four people in there. And he goes, Shadrach, Meshach, what's going on? Come on out. Can you imagine how cool those guys walked out of that fiery furnace? She's like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> how you doing, Kingy? <laughs> They're just cool as a cucumber. You know, because of their willingness to be thrown into the fire, they effectively evangelized all of Babylon. Because everybody in Babylon heard about the one true God. And it, it, as God would have it, as we enter into the year of miracles, we are getting persecutions. They're allowing the, the scope and reach of the kingdom to go far beyond we ever could imagine. Because we're being thrown into the fire. It, you know, he goes on and says, there's no other God that can save this way. In John 4, it says, this man really is the Savior of the world. Jesus is the only Savior of the world. There's no political reform that can save the world. There's no sociological reform that can save the world. No charity is going to do it. The only hope for a lost and dying world is the disciple who's willing to go with the scriptures and help them hear the truth that will save their soul. You know, many commentators have tried to speculate, who's the fourth person? It says he looks like the son of the gods. You know, it's pretty amazing. In Revelation chapter 1, the apocalyptic appearance of Jesus, it says the hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. Why does it depict his feet as bronze glowing in a furnace? Because I believe it was Jesus Christ in that fiery furnace walking around with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You know, Jesus said in Luke 12, verse 49, that he came to bring fire on earth and how he wished it was already kindled. And I believe that that fire started in Matthew 28 when he said, go make disciples of all nations. What he said is, he said, go start the fire. In Zechariah 12, predicting the coming of the kingdom, it says, there'd be like a fire pot in a wood pile. It would just go blazing all directions. And that's what the kingdom of God is like. We're planting 30 more churches this year. He says, hey, I'm going to throw you into the fire of go make disciples. You're going to get persecuted. People are going to hate you. People are going to want to kill you. There's going to come a time when people they're at, think they're offering a service to God to put your life to an end. But don't worry. I will always be with you to the very end of the age. I will be with you always in the fire. You know, I want to close out telling the story of our ancient brother, sister, brother called Polycarp. Polycarp was the bishop of Smyrna in Turkey. It was the only church that didn't get rebuked in Revelation. And he gets arrested in 156, and he's facing death. They're going to light him on fire. And he's quoted as saying this, 80 and 6 years I have served him. And he never did me any injury. How can I blaspheme my king and savior? I am a Christian. And if you wish to learn what the doctrines of Christianity are, appoint me a day and you shall hear them. 
You threaten me with fire, which burns for an hour, and after a little is extinguished. But you are ignorant of the fires of the coming judgment and eternal punishment reserved for the ungodly. Then why do you tarry? Bring forth what you will. And our ancient brother was lit on fire. He was martyred for his faith. You know, I think we stand in his shadow today to make a decision that we are never going to worship the golden statue. We don't care what it may bring us. Even if everyone else is doing it, even if people, my family or my classes or my coworkers, even if they're doing not me, I would much rather stick to my convictions and be thrown into the fiery furnace. But my brothers and sisters, don't worry if you get thrown into the furnace because when you are walking with Jesus, you are already on fire for God and to God be all the glory.